Hi, my name's Callie and I'm reviewing Animal Crossing New Horizons for GameSpot. This is a review in progress because Animal Crossing is not the kind of game you can really binge for a review. You do have to take it day by day. And as of this recording, I'm on day 13 of my island and there's a lot I haven't seen from staples of the Animal Crossing franchise to new features that were advertised, mostly terraforming. I haven't unlocked that yet. So this will be a review in progress until I have seen those things, but overall I am really enjoying it. My main concern right now is just that some things aren't in the game that I can't possibly know because I haven't gotten there yet. So here we go. One of the most striking things about New Horizons right away is that the island is basically empty when you get there. There's no stores, there's just an airport, you and two other villagers, everybody's tents. There's not even a shop. So Timmy and Tommy and Tom Nook all operate out of one tent together at the very beginning. That doesn't last very long if you play your cards right, but it is pretty empty at first and you only have access to a small portion of the map on that first day just because there's no bridges or anything. It is truly deserted, which helps make that feel way less lonely. It really does have this emphasis on friendship and of building a community up right from the beginning. And I think that really sets the tone for what you're going to be doing in New Horizons. So because the island is deserted, there's a heavy emphasis on crafting at the beginning. Um, it's the DIY system, and basically you can find DIY recipes, wash up on the beach in balloons, you can buy some, people will give them to you. But regardless of how you get them, you have to learn them, and then you can build things using resources you gather from the island. And initially I was kind of worried about how that system would incorporate into the traditional flow of Animal Crossing. And at the beginning of this game, it there's definitely a heavy emphasis on it because you just don't have anything. You, you need to craft in order to unlock things or to get furniture for your house to get a table. I didn't get a table for a long time because there just wasn't one at the shop. But as you open things up in the game, the emphasis on crafting kind of weaves in with everything else. So there's there's not as much resource gathering that you, you have to do, but I want to do it now. And I'm having fun gathering resources and finding new recipes. You can find them all over the place. People give them to you. And every time I find a new recipe, I get excited to see what it'll do and what I can craft with it. And if it's customizable, if I can change the color. For example, the first bamboo recipe I found clued me into the fact that there was bamboo in this game. And then when I finally got some bamboo, I was all excited because then I could go craft that thing and see what it did, which really does fit into what Animal Crossing is. It still is the same waking up every day, seeing what's new, finding a new recipe learning what that recipe does, and then the next day, you actually get the materials to do that recipe. So it doesn't feel as counterintuitive as I thought it would, and I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Part of the reason I'm enjoying crafting is because there's kind of a slower pace in New Horizons than previous Animal Crossing games. You really have to work for things and wait for things to progress, and there's still plenty to do, and part of that is because of the crafting. The other part of that is the Nook Mile system, which I think is really, really clever. It's uh, another currency you can use to unlock things, including the tool wheel, which I love, but the system of earning Nook Miles, I think, works so well, because it's kind of like achievements for doing things around your island, but it doesn't feel forced because some of them are challenging. Like, one that took me a really long time to do was fishing, catching 100 fish in a row without messing up. I spent many days trying to do that. But there's also ones like you get rewarded for making mistakes, like getting stung by a wasp or fainting because a tarantula bit you. So you don't have to always be chasing nook miles if you don't want to. You kind of just get them from naturally doing things that you would do around the island, watering your flowers, catching bugs, talking to your villagers. And so that system also really complements the flow of Animal Crossing and just gives you another reward for doing the things you would be doing anyway, and also a sense of accomplishment for doing those things without having to chase them for some kind of achievement. And part of that is because 
I don't really have to grind for Nook Miles. I have so many Nook Miles and I spend them all the time. One of the biggest things you can spend Nook Miles on is traveling to deserted islands, other than the island that you're already on. They're much smaller than your island and they kind of are random. You don't really know what you're gonna get when you go there. You can get an island with a different kind of fruit than you have. You can get an island that has really rare insects or bugs. Like I found one that was just covered in tarantulas and I farmed tarantulas for half an hour and went and sold them. The one thing that is disappointing about the system to me is unlike New Leaf's Island, these islands are still in your same hemisphere, your same season. And so you're not getting stuff that you couldn't normally get on your island. It's more about the chase for a rare one with money making opportunities or finding a villager that you want to invite to live in your town. The thing about New Leaf's Island was you could go and catch bugs out of season and they were really rare and really profitable. So, you know, the, the deserted islands are, are kind of hit or miss for me. I'm finding a lot of ones that I go and I'm kind of like, ah, there's not a lot here for me. And then some that really are exciting and that's just kind of the gamble you take when you go. But it's still a cool opportunity to be able to see something, for example, the bamboo that I didn't know I could find, I found on an island like that. Another thing that's kind of hit or miss are the new navigation items, the ladder and the vaulting pole. Both of them are tools that you can equip and the vaulting pole helps you get over rivers and the ladder helps you get up cliffs. And the cumbersome part is that even with the tool wheel, which helps you select tools way faster than you could ever before, it's still kind of annoying to swap between them, especially if you're cutting down trees or watering flowers and constantly swapping between two tools instead of just putting the ladder or pole away. But I do really enjoy the flexibility of being able to cross my river wherever I want. In a pinch, if I really don't feel like walking all the way to the bridge I just built, that is nice. And it's kind of mitigated because you can unlock the ability to build bridges and inclines pretty early on. So if you really don't like using them, you can kind of just fix that for yourself by building the inclines and bridges where you would normally be putting up ladders or using your vaulting pole. That said, I really do love exploring the island, not just because I'm looking for new visitors or doing my typical daily chores that you do in Animal Crossing, but also because it is so beautiful. It is, it is visually more of a treat than any other Animal Crossing game, as you would expect, but the little details really surprised me and I, I really just love observing them. Like, you might have seen in preview coverage that animals can eat sandwiches or carry stuff around and they have more idle animations. Sometimes they sit under a tree and take a nap. But I was really surprised to find one of my villagers singing in the town square. I heard an animal singing and I was kind of taken aback because this villager was not necessarily my favorite. I wasn't sure if I liked him, but he was singing a little song in the town square for like an hour. I sat and watched him for a really long time and other villagers came up and one of them sat down and watched him with me. And I was just, just take, I just didn't expect it. And it was so cute. I got really emotional. And now he's one of my favorite villagers that I have in my town. And it's those little things that draw you into the villagers even more. Obviously we all have our favorite villagers in Animal Crossing. If you've ever played one before, you probably are attached to at least one of them, but I don't have any villagers that I've ever had before in my town. And I'm really growing to love each and every one of them just because of these little details on top of their cute little things they say, or visiting their houses, the normal stuff you would do in Animal Crossing. It's those small idle things, just watching them in the distance that I am loving so much about New Horizons. And on the note of pretty things, the museum pretty much blew me away. I was not expecting the museum to be so gorgeous. I've played every Animal Crossing game. I've donated my share of fish and bugs and dinosaurs. I was just not expecting what this museum is. I mean, it's first of all, it's huge. The insect exhibit is multiple parts. Well, each exhibit is multiple parts, but the insect exhibit is really varied. There's like a stream and trees, and then you go into like a butterfly area and you kind of wrap around and it, it feels like a real museum exhibit in a lot of ways. The fish one, like, you can walk up to a tank and if you just kind of stop and look up at it, the camera might pan and show you what's in the tank. And just little details like that really made it a richer experience for me. And the fossil exhibit is especially cool because there's kind of like guiding lines on the ground that seem like they're trying to mark like evolutionary lines. And it really, it just feels like you're 
on a museum tour going through that museum. You, you still have the incredible museum music that kind of puts you in like a stoic mood. And on top of that, it's more beautiful and more impressive than it's ever been. And I just, that was one of the first things that struck me about New Horizons. So those are my impressions after 13 days with Animal Crossing New Horizons. Obviously, I still have a lot to do and a lot to see, so I'm gonna keep playing every day, as you do, until I see those things, especially terraforming. I can't wait to see how that works. Anyway, stay tuned for the full review, and for more on Animal Crossing New Horizons, stay tuned to GameSpot.